uh, major programs and opportunities in A&D, but this is for the global market. So you saw, you heard people talk about for the domestic market, the opportunities in domestic. So let's, let's hear from the panelists. We have a very eminent uh, set of panelists here. Uh, this is going to be chaired by none other than Dr. Aparao, who is the chairman and managing director of uh, our Centum Group. Uh, right, he's going to be the chairperson. Sir, please, please come on, guys. Like to invite Ashish Saraf, VP Industrial Partnerships from Airbus, to come on stage as well. Uh, Jagmohan Singh, Regional Director, India, Sri Lanka, and Maldives, uh, Lockheed Martin. And SK Acharya, uh, Executive Director of uh, BEL. So request uh, Dr. Aparao to kind of deliver the keynote and then take this panel discussion further. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it seems like the afternoon session was really good. It's fully packed. And uh, thank you for being here. Um, I have a request. Can you turn those lights on? Because we can't see anybody. Uh, we just want to make sure you guys are not sleeping. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, it's a real privilege and an honor to be here today uh, with my co-panelists. And uh, I think the topic, just so that I don't, um, is the panel discussion is on major programs and opportunities in aerospace and defense for the global markets. So that's really what it is. I think the format is going to be, uh, each of us will probably say, walk, talk for about eight minutes to 10 minutes. And once we are done with that, I think we open it up for Q&A. Um, this should, I think, this is for about an hour. So it's... Uh, about 3.30, we should wrap up by 4.30, if that's okay with you. So um, I think to start with, maybe um, uh, I also re uh, suggest and uh, ask each of the panelists to introduce themselves while uh, they go up to give their presentation. So uh, we can keep it short and crisp. And uh, again, thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, since morning, we are hearing uh, various opportunities in the Indian defense market. As Minister said, that this is a very lucrative market as of now. Um, what I am going to cover is, in general terms, what opportunities are in Indian defense uh, sector itself. And when we look at Indian opportunities, then, of course, uh, whichever industry comes in, in Indian uh, uh, market, they are good for global market as well. Uh, if we, if you look at the Indian budget, uh, somebody, I think, uh, one of the companies mentioned that for in the next uh, 10 years or so, the Indian market is around $150 billion. Uh, I think I have heard from other sources that uh, this market is more than $250 billion. In addition to that, there are uh, offset opportunities as well. But if I look at uh, about a couple of weeks back, uh, during Commander's Conference, uh, the Indian Defense Forces have put up uh, the budget estimates of around $416 billion in next five years. That is, their requirement is 27 lakh crores. That is for the defense modernization programs. And that has been, I think, put up to the internal committees, which will look at the budgets. Uh, similarly, uh, that is, I'm talking about the 13th uh, plan of defense uh, modernization. Uh, and if you look at long-term uh, integrated uh, perspective plans, which is for 15 years, uh, the budget is going to be much more for the defense, uh, increasingly, and therefore, that all is relevant to Indian industry. And if Indian industry starts participating in Indian programs, they will automatically become part of global supply chain and they will start looking at global market. To my mind, we have to look at the opportunities in India first before going to the global market. Because 
uh, in the global market, the supply chain is already well established. They have in their comfort zone. And when they look for uh, products and um, solutions from India, they will look them uh, from the proven perspective. That means they should get approved in India first. Uh, I'm not talking about um, components and subsystems. I'm talking about the full platforms. So the companies who are doing better here in making uh, components, subsystems, and assemblies, they will ultimately get, uh, I think, aligned for the global market and global supply chain. Uh, if we look at big opportunities, I think if we look at strategic partnership approach which Indian government has taken, the four upcoming programs, I think some of you are aware about strategic partnership concept. Uh, for the benefit of those who are not aware, there are four programs which are being undertaken under strategic partnership. That is submarines, single engine aircraft, helicopters, and combat vehicles. The RFIs for uh, um, submarines has already been uh, issued, and that is uh, around $10 billion program in which Indian OEMs will take the lead, and they will use the Indian supply chain uh, to develop those solutions. Of course, they will look for the technology partner from uh, foreign OEMs. Two more RFIs have been issued, that is for NUH and NMRH, Naval multi Road Helicopter Program. And these programs are also between 12 to $15 billion worth. Here also, uh, since a uh, lot of uh, stuff has to come from India, that is uh, part of Make in India concept, uh, I think Indian companies, MSMEs as well as tier ones will benefit from that. The single engine aircraft you uh, have been hearing, uh, RFI will be issued shortly, and that is also around 12 to $18 billion program. And then the future infantry combat vehicle and uh, armor uh, vehicles, that is also 10 billion. So this is fr from 45 to $50 billion programs will be there under strategic partnership. And that is a big opportunity for uh, Indian companies, whether it is Indian lead companies and MSMEs to uh, grow in that particular space and look for global opportunities from there on. Uh, in addition to uh, the projects in strategic partnership, I think uh, uh, all the three services, Army, Navy, Air Force, they have been um, working on many other uh, uh, like upcoming modernization programs. Uh, acceptance of necessity for the last, I think, couple of uh, years is already in place for up to $50 billion. That accept acceptance of necessity is the first step to go for uh, global uh, or like manufacturing programs or uh, global procurement programs. Uh, if you look at Air Force, there are requirement of helicopters, EW systems, refueling, and uh, ground-based air defense systems, and those are multi-billion programs. Uh, the reason I am uh, I am just uh, giving this these figures is that there is a huge defense industry which is waiting for you for the smaller companies who are who want to come in and for the for the companies who are already established as, uh, uh, as suppliers to DRDO, DPSUs, and uh, other. Similarly, Army also, we have heard a number of times, I think uh, all of uh, almost all the air defense systems are uh, in their last stages and uh, new acquisitions are taking place, whether it is uh, MRSAM, which is already happening by Bell and IAI Israel. Uh, similarly, LRSAM, SRSAM, and v Shorad and new gun systems for air defense. So, when these programs get executed here, there's a lot of stuff which needs to be manufactured, whether it is in partnership with foreign technology partners or by Bell or uh, any other entity, uh, Indian leads. Uh, so th th those are creating big uh, opportunities. And similarly, for mechanized forces and uh, infantry, uh, you name it, the military modernization is required in all those segments. And that uh, I think this government is thinking of uh, increasing the uh, annual budget of defense. Uh, subsequently, I think every year we'll find the new programs coming in. The Navy is also looking for building a 200 ship Navy. Currently, they have 150 ships, and all the big potent ships will be coming up, which includes destroyers, frigates, and MCMV type of programs. In addition to, of course, their helicopters, aircrafts, UAVs, and all. Uh, 
looking at opportunities, how like uh, the companies like you can benefit. To my mind, firstly, uh, the companies will benefit by connecting with the Indian leads, whether it is the big companies, LNT, Tata's, uh, the upcoming uh, Bharat Forge. So, because they are going to undertake the programs, whether it is under IDDM category or under Make in India uh, concept, they will be the lead, they will be getting the RFPs, and if tier ones and other suppliers connect with them, they are going to get benefited. Uh, secondly, with OEMs, like Lockheed Martin, we have the opportunities of partnerships, having joint ventures, and of course, uh, taking care of offset obligations, which are uh, to be fulfilled by us because of our own uh, uh, the sales here. Um, then comes the DPSUs, DRDO, and uh, supply chain is already well connected with them, and the new entrants maybe uh, may look for uh, connecting with HAL, BEL, and all who are going to have many programs, program like uh, uh, the Russian, the helicopter program which is coming up at new facilities. So uh, those are going to continue in that direction, and then the life cycle cost for the Indian companies. Uh, I think life cycle cost itself is 200 to 300 times generally till that time, uh, th that is the expenditure on those. So there are big opportunities in uh, life cycle cost, whether it is a uh, part of uh, PBL, that is performance based logistics, or maintenance, upgrades, refurbishment, etc. The, the new concepts which are coming up uh, as uh, India is being looked at uh, as a new uh, uh, the manufacturing hub in future, uh, even for the defense production, many com countries are looking at India uh, to get the supply, uh, to get their manufacturing here. Uh, some of the joint ventures are already function, you have heard, including us, Lockheed Martin. Uh, we have uh, been having joint ventures in Hyderabad itself for the last uh, seven years. And those joint ventures are manufacturing large aero structures of uh, C-130J Hercules aircraft and manufacturing the cabins of S-92 helicopters. There are 5,000 uh, detailed parts which are being manufactured and then the cabin is uh, integrated here itself for the global supplies. So even uh, I think many other uh, companies are also having the joint ventures here. Uh, uh, the, the supply chain here in India, the companies who are not aware about that, I think they should they should get connected with the, the lead joint venture partners and uh, uh, maybe prepare the, you, yourself for um, uh, in, uh, getting into the supply chain. Service sector is also expanding. Um, the new concept like performance-based logistics, MROs, or uh, refurbishment of the equipment and overalls, uh, all are part of the service uh, uh, that will g bring in uh, good opportunities. The indigenization, uh, again, uh, some of the equipment for foreign origin, these are being uh, indigenized here in India. Department of uh, uh, indigenization is uh, at every uh, defense headquarters. They are working on um, uh, making the components here itself and in, in some ways even sub-assemblies. Um, the core development, like uh, in US, we have DTTI, Defense Technology, and uh, uh, that, that initiative, which was initiated maybe four or five years back, and for that, uh, the, most of the technologies uh, which are being offered to India, I think uh, that is also interesting area where in a lot of uh, good solutions might be produced jointly between uh, Indian industry and uh, the US industry. Um, th that's it from uh, my side, I think. Um, uh, thank you very much for listening. Can I ask uh, Ashish to uh, talk, please? Thanks. Um, respected panel chair, esteemed co-panelists, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you, uh, thanks uh, Deftronics for inviting Airbus to share our perspectives uh, on, on this key platform. Uh, just would like to start uh, by saying that as if there is a sector currently that we all can say is clearly clocking quarter over quarter and year over year growth, that's the aviation sector. And uh, uh, the policies have been reformed. Uh, all of us know that you know, including the civil aviation, the DPP, 
make in india all these things essentially what they do is they they facilitate um you know doing business in india and uh, obviously we have seen that uh, this state itself ranks at the top of uh, ease of doing business uh, parallelly aerospace manufacturing has shown an uptick in activity so uh, just if you look at airbus in the last decade we have grown 16 times our spend sourcing spend from the country and a good part of that essentially consists of electronics and electrical systems um in terms of absolute supplier growth we have uh, we started with zero uh, we obviously over the last decade has come to develop about 46 plus suppliers uh, who supply a wide range of aerospace components right from structures super specialty machine components to composites to electrical wiring harnesses to electronic components uh, so it's a very wide spectrum and we are committed to developing it uh on the manufacturing side uh, we have put make in india at as at the heart of our strategy and it's make in india not only for india but make in india for the world and uh, this is where every airbus that gets delivered from our uh, final assembly line in toulouse has uh, components that are made in india our sourcing cross 500 million dollars last year and and it's growing we are committed to growing it year over year and which includes a lot of large uh, not only large but small and medium scale enterprises as well in fact most of them are uh, smes uh, so a key component of our sourcing strategy is electrical and electronic components wiring harnesses safety related systems mainly the triggers actuation systems pcbs for control panels uh, are some of the components that we look to source from the country and we already do source from the country in some cases uh, so it's driven mostly by as you know the vast pool of engineering talent innovation from the small and medium scale enterprises the clear cost drivers that we take advantage of um, are the drivers of sourcing strategy uh, for airbus in india now while there are obvious advantages to sourcing the electronic sourcing area has not uh, been without challenges one of the key things we look for is we encounter challenge in sourcing electronics that we struggle to find suppliers that provide end to end solutions uh, what that means is solutions that start from design manufacture integration testing and installation into the final assembly line so we this is what we look for because in airbus uh, as we know typically as oems we are integrators we hardly do let's say obviously the design but about 20% of the aircraft is actually done uh, at airbus the rest of it is pretty much outsourced so what that means is that we look for someone who's who would basically bring in a plug and play system to us and that is where the opportunity lies the entire bit of sourcing that's done by airbus here is done for the global market uh, 100% of our spend that is in the country is utilized for export uh, we are here because it makes sense for us to do business our suppliers compete with global su suppliers suppliers from china taiwan and eastern european countries and they win packages and we have an arm which actually invest in them to bring them up to speed on our policies and procedures and how to bid and how to win but ultimately they win businesses and that is how we we grow our spending um so we do look for really quality suppliers who are capable of delivering uh, components that actually uh, have complete systemic solutions including testing and installation and that there, there lies the opportunity um, uh, certainly that also means a lot of investment as well uh, but uh, for the global market essentially what we do is we fully export and we could you know look at a system supplier who could kind of bring us a complete assembly um, and then one of the things uh, we clearly have in india is obviously bell who's kind of capable of doing Uh, a lot of that including design to full integration um now 
in terms of uh, offset right now we do all the business in india without any offset obligation and certainly the offset opens opportunities for us to bring in more um, once the government moves to close some of the programs that we have offered and we have offered programs worth uh, worth literally that would have offset obligations on us, us close to hundreds of millions of dollars uh, mainly in the electronic space that would prepare our we would develop supply chain to prepare the supply base for make in india programs and what it does is it actually allows us to invest in our suppliers to make them ready for the big make in india programs which actually were narrated specifically as part of the strategic partnership uh, uh, programs and not only strategic partnership but even outside strategic partnership we have offered programs that actually bring in the entire line of military cargo aircrafts into india and as part of strategic uh, partnership we have offered a program that brings in a full line of helicopter assembly uh, that will be made from india for india as well as for the global market uh, so substantial opportunities exist specifically in this area in the buyer nominated equipment space where companies like bell have already pioneered equipment that can be directly integrated and there lies an opportunity for the supply base here to step up get trained and be an integrator or be a be a systemic a provider which could actually be integrated in the end aircraft uh, we have already proposed to establish full line of panther helicopters as part of the naval utility helicopter program which has the capability to create a complete ecosystem of electronics uh, specifically uh, manufacturing assembly testing and integration as well as deliver the complete mro including the component repair section of uh, of Uh, these full aircraft that are made in india and made for the world so this represents significant opportunity in indigenization where we will actually be enab enabling our supply base initially to train them as part of our obligations and later on to actually enhance their capabilities for them to make uh, integrated suppliers that could supply us complete uh, assemblies that could be just plugged and played into the final aircraft so we are very excited to offer these programs just not just as make in india but make in india for the world as well thank you so much thank you ashish um mr acharya can i request you to can you please load the presentation Good afternoon. I am uh, S K Acharya. I had a strategic business unit in B L Bangalore called Electronic Warfare and Avionics. I'll give a brief overview about Bell and the overview of the global market in aerospace and defence. Hmm? That is on the side. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well. Oh, thank you. So then, the Indian market, of course, the aerospace and defence Indian market opportunities. The key drivers for A and D opportunity in India and abroad, and what are the challenges? A brief overview about Bell. You know, Bell was established in 1954 under the Ministry of Defence. it has a strong focus on r&d is a technology driven company operating in competitive defense electronics area it is the 61st among the top 100 companies worldwide in defense revenue we have nine factories the biggest factory is in bangalore then gaziabad pune maslipatnam chennai panchkula kotdwara hyderabad and navi mumbai we have some joint ventures we have formed a joint venture with the ge for medical electronics and parts and x-ray tubes with thales mainly for civil air air traffic management radars and select defense radars of course in other areas which will be explored later and we have fully owned subsidiary bell optronics division 
it is for night vision image intensifier tubes so if you see look at our strength it's around uh, 9848 employees 4605 are engineers and half of them are in r and d these are the manufacturing units located all over india bangalore is the biggest unit in bank i mean it is established in 54 where most of the uh, systems from bell i would say more than 50% of the bell turnover is produced here focus is on military communication network network sentry system missile system electronic warfare and avionics etc and we have of course eight other uh, units and totally we have around 19 strategic business units so this is the next slide shows the bell turnover bell revenue in the last 5 years we are in the last year we are around 8800 crore we it, that gave a turnover of growth of around 17% and we are looking for a similar turnover i mean similar growth in this year as well this is the business profile we have you can see more on, more than half of our business are uh, from radar fire control systems and weapon systems followed by electronic warfare and avionics communication and other areas then to give an overview on the aerospace and defense requirement global requirement the global defense market is expected to reach around 2365 billion by 2025 growing at a rate of 3% during from 2015 to 2025 the defense if you see it grows at a rate currently there was a stagnation period now it has started picking up the growth is around 3% if you look at defense and aerospace sector together it is around 2% and this global market has increased it has picked up mainly for the in the last year and the years ahead it will pick up further because of the prevailing global scenario change in us government and policies and global security threats so if you can see the figures earlier 2005 to 2015 there was a growth rate of around 2% it has picked up and last 2015 it was around 1760 billion us dollars and is expected to grow to 2365 billion dollars in the coming years you see the major global players in and industry worldwide you can see these are some of the players general electric boeing airbus lockheed martin united technologies general dynamics northrop grumman bae systems raytheon and thales these are some of the major players india has the third largest armed forces in the world the indian defense market is the seventh largest defense market across the globe with over 40 billion budget us dollar budget the market is expected to witness a healthy growth at the rate of around 7% currently around 60% of defense requirements are being imported if you see between the three services the capital spending it gives a approximate idea of our defense spending army being the highest defense spender then air force and navy <clears throat> indian defense spend continues to grow cumulative expenditure in next 15 years is going to be around 235 billion us dollars Indian defense aviation industry is one of the fastest growing markets in the world propelled by increasing defense spend. We see Indian Air Force spent around 35 billion US dollar in last 5 years to spend around 70 billion more in the next 10 years. Substantial growth foreseen for EW and avionics systems due to their increased importance as force multipliers. total by global acquisitions in pipeline for air platforms is around us 30 billion 
and there are huge upset opportunities. It's going to be around 10 to 15 billion US dollars in next five to six years. And another area is the MRO opportunities, maintenance, repair, and overall. That is going to grow at 10% rate to reach around 2. Point, more than 2.5 billion US dollars by 2020. And another new area I would say is the emerging opportunity is in the aircraft integration business in mission aircrafts and multi-mission maritime aircraft for Indian Coast Guard. Huge modernization and upgrade plans for the Indian Defense Forces coupled with government's commitment to support these plans. There will be going to be large scale modernization. Modernization plans in 15, uh, the plan is there till 2027. There are major upgrade programs. Current IAF inventory is around 1322 aircraft. And if you see what is, what could be a driver, if you see there some of the programs which are in the process of acquisition are listed here. As you all know that, in the next slide, sorry. The Rafal 36 aircraft is globally being procured by Indian Ministry of Defense for Indian Air Force. Fifth generation fighter aircraft, Sukhoi 30, there is going to be more procurement. Light combat aircraft, MiG-29 upgrade, and there are Jaguar and Mirage upgrade programs. There are many helicopter uh, programs like LCH, ELH, etc. And support aircraft like trainer aircraft like Hawk, IJT, and basic trainer fleet. The key drivers for opportunity in India, you see that we have this long term integrated perspective plan. Upset requirement of government of India, which has you know, 30% of upset in programs on the global procurement exceeding 2,000 crore. Making India drive by the government of India and simplification of procedures on buy and make Indian. Outsourcing to Indian, India by joint ventures. India offers a cost advantage in manufacturing for both material and labor cost. See, the global growth in A&D industry has been, you know, it was sort of in stagnation in the last years. And then the global A&D players have been looking at how to improve their bottom line. And they have looked at India as an opportunity for outsourcing. These are some of the global opportunities for India and uh, global opportunities. Land systems where armor and mechanized infantry, artillery, infantry, army, air defense, naval systems, surface ships, submarines, and support air support ships. Military aviation system, we have fighter aircraft opportunities, helicopters, and support aircraft, and C4 ISR systems. What are the challenges? There are many opportunities as we saw, but we have a lot of challenges. So main being for the global market, if you want to look at export opportunities, the access to technology is limited. Technology expertise, mainly critical challenge faced by the Indian companies. Keeping pace with high use of technology across design life cycle. And when you get a technology transfer from a global company, we don't get a complete TOT. And the global companies are reluctant to transfer cutting edge technologies. And because of lack of technology expertise, we are unable to play a clear collaborative role. And in A&D industry, to look for the global market, quality is going to be a major differentiator. The compliance to stringent process and quality standards zero tolerance to failure and complying to, of course, the processes requirements and process maturity. And now there is a requirement to abide by the, uh, acquire the certification processes, air ordinary certifications for processes and parts, approval of parts made in India. Sometimes it takes a long time. 
lack of international certification such as NATCAP. Then another year could be th this all A and D industry is a highly capital intensive. Rapid and continuous injection of capital to maintain growth in initial phase is required. Ongoing investment on working capital, market development, branding and awareness. You have this defense procurement policy, the latest was DPP 2016, which gives higher preference to buy and make India, that is IDDM category, and lowest preference to buy global. Currently, the foreign direct investment is 49% and it is expected to grow to 100%. Improved synergy between production, research, design and certification agencies are required to make the program a success. Private defense industry in India is still relatively young. Need to overcome barriers to reach maturity like understanding of the defense domain requirements prohibitive industry entry cost, export of defense intellectual property from foreign countries that, has, that is specifically from US, integration difficulties when combining complex weapon systems. And then we should have a very good supply chain and that's going, also going to be a challenge. Managing complex supply chain, two-third of product cost, cost across the supply chain and in major systems. And you have to have integrator and super integrators and increasing role of role in value chain. And raw material development capabilities, that is where we lack. So significant shift in type of raw material use in airframe structures are going to be there. Material composition migrating to advanced materials in aircraft manufacturing demand for composites to grow and most of the raw materials currently are imported. And then there is a need to improve the productivity and skill sets, working environment, automation and manufacturing best practices, like we need to have the trace traceability, focus on process improvement in our production process, enhancing the skill sets through substantial increase in technical skill courses. We need to improve industry-university relationships, setting up of R&D base. And then there is a need for long-term product support, which is going to be a challenge. Spares for support, for long-term product support, addressing obsolescence through a proper obsolescence management, technology refresh or technology upgrades, etc. So these are the various challenges. Currently, we look at the global uh, market in A&D for the Indian industries is going to be limited. Whatever we can get this uh, market will be through a collaborative route or when you manufacture in India, a global company establishes a JV or a company in India for the global requirement that is the, and we, we collaborate with them or we start producing for a global requirement as an offset. That will be the initial opportunities till, till we reach a level where our indigenous IP generation is there for, and we produce or we develop and produce products and compete globally to have significant exports in the global market. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.